Yes, folks, welcome to episode five of the Fundamental Wisdom Podcast with your host, Coach Barrett K. On this podcast is where we ask the questions you want the answers to, discuss the ideas that matter in order to aid your journey ascending to your highest self. We have practical discussions in order to help you level up physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. And on this episode, I'm honored to be joined by one of my personal favorite Instagram accounts with some of the most interesting viewpoints and takes that I've ever seen. A man that shamelessly calls out fake gurus and BS advice, radical biologist, and Mr. Controversial himself, Zeb from Clearly. How are you doing, Clearly? Bart, thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, man, all good. I'm a, I'm a little red, as you can see, for all the, <laughs> the, the watchers on, on YouTube. We had a little laugh about this. So I spent today just walking all around Turkey, and I'd like to think that it's wind burn, not sunburn, um, but it is what it is. So I'm sure all the YouTube viewers will get a nice laugh out of this. And uh, <laughs> So it is 7 p.m. for me right now. Where about to you? I know that you're quite I'm a few hours Minnesota, behind. in Minnesota in the U.S., Mm, mm, mm. So pretty know. pretty far up north we just got some extra snow it's been coming down like mad mm, 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 mm. that is nice and uh so what is it the morning time for you i think yeah it's about 11 o'clock 11 o'clock on a on a yep. sunday how's your sunday looking any major plans uh pretty good did a little workout this morning got some breakfast uh tried to emulate you know your cooking dude you've got some of the oh. best meals i see on instagram like trumps everyone this <laughs> thank you man that means a lot so that I'll means a lot get fueled up rip this podcast and probably do some skiing this afternoon oh that is nice that is nice yeah i see where you live you know you seem very fulfilled with uh with your surroundings so that is good man cool live from minnesota so the first question i'd like to ask you obviously you have you know a lot of controversial viewpoints as i said uh you post a lot of like actionable advice out there so i want to know the ins and outs of where that came from what's your you know zero to hero story where did your journey begin you know with with regards to everything like health and fitness and, and training and, and mindsets and you know how you just got exposed into this vast vast world yeah, definitely, man. It's uh, It's been a journey to say the least. I think like most guys, I started young in the gym. Uh, so I had, you know, an athletic background, but didn't really hit the gym uh, until 2021. You know, that mm -hmm. was my first trip to GNC, getting protein powder, Jack 3D pre-workout before they changed the recipe. So it had all the, all the good stuff, the NCAA illegalized. Uh, that was really my first adventure into the fitness world. So you know, like any young man's dream is about getting ripped, you know, trying to become, uh, you know, the, the person that you want to be. Mm. Um, and I think at that point I, I went paleo. So that was like the first decision I made. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start hitting this protein powder, add in a few supplements and basically just started with cutting out bread. So it was the classic kind of like rice, broccoli, chicken breast gym diet of 2011, you know, the whole mm. gym tan laundry thing. So did that um, and progressed down that path for probably four or five years. And, you know, the goal back then was to get, to get big. So, you know, I start, I was pretty small in high school. I was five, seven, 125, you know, not mm. very big, but by the time I was 21, I was like six, two, 160 and i was mm -hmm. like all right let's see how, how far we can push this so kind of on that trajectory got up to 195 uh and at that time i was working in the oil fields uh this was kind of during the fracking boom of 2014 2015 so i was all over the western and southwestern united states living on location so you know you're out on a rig for a month two months at a time working days on days off shifts, 20 days on 10 days off, that kind of thing where, you know, you're out in the wilderness with nothing to do other than like lift and eat, but you're living mm -hmm. in this toxic environment. And I, at the time being a junior, I uh, was working night shifts. Mm. So, you know, I, I wasn't up on the rig floor. I was an engineer. So I was working in an office, but nonetheless, you know, your circadian rhythm is just completely disrupted. You're under blue lights, um, you know, the rig environment itself is just pure fumes. You're like in a basin mm -hmm. and everything just kind of congregates there. So you're breathing fumes, you're under blue light. 
and I'm on this like super high calorie diet. And, you know, arguably I was being as healthy as I could, but you're out there for a month, two months, and then you get a month off. Where do you go? Las Vegas, you go party, you know, you live vicariously. So that Mm -hmm. all started to kind of add up. And, um, it, it got to a point, I guess the first time I really started diving into the biology behind it all. Uh, I've always been into nootropics and, you know, different, different drugs to stimulate mental activity and different, you know, experiences. And I had a buddy who was like, dude, you should try this modafinil. I don't know if you've, you've heard of modafinil before. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like 2015. So it was like all the rage out on wall street. Everyone was, uh, either microdosing acid or on modafinil. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I'll I'll give this thing a shot. So I popped half of modafinil and had a histamine reaction. So I got like hives on my neck and I'm like, oh my God, like what the hell is going on? Like ran a hot bath, jumped in the bath, tried to burn it off. And and that got me asking the question, well, what's what's a histamine reaction and why does my body respond that way to it? And that got me into methylation. And learning about methylation, it's like really the heart of our metabolism. So that kind of opened my eyes to this whole new world of like, oh, wow, this isn't necessarily just about diet, but it's about like keeping our biology running efficiently while, you know, implementing a diet at the same time and working on nutrition. Uh, So that was that was 2015. And, you know, this was right around the time oil prices crashed. So everyone got laid off and I'm just chilling for a winter. I'm like, well, let's, let's start learning a little bit more about this. And Mm. my skin was a mess from, from that whole lifestyle between the toxins and the partying and all that stuff. Mm. So I was like, Hey, I need to figure out my skin issues myself. And then I wanted to kind of get ahead of my parents' health. You know, they're, they're aging, they're in their late sixties, early seventies. And both my grandparents on my mom's side had Alzheimer's and dementia. And I was like, well, you know, not only do I not want to lose my parents that way, but with these memory care units and stuff being the cost that they are, it's just not feasible. Like functional medicine is the way to treat disease. It's about staying healthy. It's not like about getting better. Mm. So I realized that not only methylation is at the heart of things like skin issues and metabolism, but it's the root of autoimmune disease. And basically the downstream of everything that goes wrong with the body is, you know, is inefficiency within methylation. So got into that, uh, figured out how to basically hack that, fix my skin issues. And I had transitioned at that time, this is now 2017, 2018, had transitioned into physical commodity trading. So I was working Mm -hmm. in agriculture, um, trading truckloads of stuff. We were, you know, doing the most amount of volume in the Midwest with dried grain distillers and soybean meal and that kind of stuff going into, yeah, exactly. Going Soy. into commercial, <laughs> commercial animal uh, feedlots and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I like this job. Like I, I love supply chain. I love trading. I love the kind of like one-on-one communication you have with some of these processors and also with the farmers, but I can't be putting this energy into commercial agriculture. Cause by that time I was like, that's the ultimate evil. Like I'm Mm. just helping kind of feed the beast here. So I was looking into some other burgeoning markets at the time and hemp was up and coming. This was 2017, right after Kentucky had passed their farm bill and other states were starting to implement uh, hemp programs. And hemp flour was trading at like 55 bucks a pound. It was like insane. I was like, what am I doing here trading truckloads of soybean meal that's worth like two grand when like, you know, a couple pounds of hemp is worth the same amount. So Mm. at that point I moved down to Kentucky and this was, I mean, this was my all in moment. And I think like from like a financial perspective for your listeners, like you really have to go all in on something in order to be successful. And you don't necessarily you have to have the vision and you have to have the goal of what it's going to be. But I think you have to completely submerse yourself into the unknown. And then like your Mm -hmm. mind projects what you expect and builds those expectations into reality. So, you know, I, I quit my trading job. 
uh, moved down to the South into the sticks in Kentucky, you know, refinanced my car that just basically was like, all right, I've got this amount of money to make something of myself. <laughs> so, mm. uh, got into, uh, the hemp industry, started working at a processor, uh, figured out what extraction was all about. So for those of you that don't know, you know, you're taking raw hemp flour from the field, it's getting harvested, brought into a processor and then extracted the extractor that I was working for was doing CO2 extraction. So we were extracting that into a rod crew oil, which is like kind of like a thick resin. Mm. And then it's distilled into kind of like a honey from there, which is another uh, product. And then from that, it's crashed into isolate, which is like a white powder. Mm. So it was learning the supply chain from flour to isolate, kind of seeing that whole thing. And then eventually went and started uh, our own operation in Southwestern Kentucky. So we had a uh, 800 acre hemp farming network, oh, and then we wow. built out a 50,000 square foot commercial drying facility, basically a throughput facility for flour to come in commercially dry and then go to extractors. And then I was dealing with that whole uh, extracted wholesale market at the time. So that's, I guess, to transition that into your uh, initial question about like, where did this all start? That's kind of where more of the supplement game started. Cause I had used mm. that during that whole rehabilitation process. I had used CBD um, just as an anti-inflammatory. It was like a band-aid to help with the skin issues while fixing kind of the underlying uh, metabolic disorder. And, you know, hemp, I chose that. I chose CBD because I, you know, I went to school in Colorado in Boulder during the peak of the medical marijuana boom in like 2009, 2010, you know, we, we all went and got our med cards, uh, had, you know, I think my dad actually financed our first grow in my sophomore garage. Oh, wow. And, you know, it was, it was ridiculous. You know, we went down to like downtown Denver to an old pawn shop, you know, and there's like a, a doctor in the corner behind like, you know, a pop-up little like cloth. You you walk behind there and he's like, so what can I help you with? I'm like, listen, doc, my knee kind of hurts when I ski. Can you help me out here? And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, they were handing out prescriptions left and right. <laughs> oh so I saw the, saw the value in plant medicine, but, you know, fast forward two, three years and everyone and their brother was moving to Colorado to get a med card. And you're like, wait a second, this isn't plant medicine. This is just like the abuse of plants and mm. it's solely being used to get inebriated. So I saw that whole culture kind of begin and was averse to it, you know? So mm. I saw CBD as kind of like a happy medium where you're not abusing the plant um, and you're actually getting the, the medicinal aspects from it. Mm. So uh, yeah, that was what we wrapped up that company in 2021. Um, that's a crazy story too, but that uh, that transition from hemp to then the exit of that market, that's kind of where I implemented a lot of this other stuff that I've I've learned and uh, developed upon the last like three years or so. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, what a what an interesting story. So you were like stuck in this life, you know, on the oil rigs, and you're in this routine of just like not sleeping and then partying and all of this. And that is so vastly different to how I imagine you live right now. So that's a that's a yeah. beautiful story. You touched on hemp and CBD quite a lot there, and you said that it aided your journey. So could you just expand on that a little bit more? So obviously, you know, like weed, whatever. You know, people think, oh, it's 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 weed, whatever. And then you know, people hear CBD, and it's like, oh, well, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't get you high, like you know, mm -hmm. the the real thing, the THC. So. What are some benefits that, you know, you noticed and why, why do you swear by it? Why do you use it? Well, I didn't know this at the time, but you know, we have our endogenous endocannabinoid system, which works a lot like our neurotransmitter system. Mm. And in reality, we're creating the, those endogenous cannabinoids from omega-3 fatty acids. So what I didn't know was that basically a CBD was replacing what would have been a high seafood diet that we would have probably had ancestrally. Mm. So when you look at how that 
act or th how that interacts you know you've got uh omega threes like dha that are then converted into cannabinoids that interact on your cb1 receptors in your hippocampus that promote parasympathetic activity mm. so parasympathetic activity is that kind of calm mode you know where your hrv comes up it's the repair mode it's the opposite of fight or flight mm. so we all know that in the modern environment we're constantly in this sympathetic state fight or flight let's go this is a real easy hack just to ease you into a parasympathetic state that's going to be more conducive to healing mm. so that's the main aspect i mean i you definitely get uh uh, kind of like a, a high, a mild high from it, depending on your dosage. Mm. Um, but it's much, it's much more subtle, you know, mm. marijuana is like, you know, sometimes you're freaking out, especially with some of the strains these days that are like 40% THC. It's like, yeah, might as well go take a psychedelic at that point. Yeah. This is much, much more relaxing where you're like, ah, you know, you can hit this kind of flow state. Uh, you can take that deep breath that, and I, I kind of, have identified that being able to take that deep sigh and hit that like relief, that's like parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. So just take a few drops of that, get that relief. It's great for body movement workouts, great for writing creativity. Um, and yeah, it, it helped keep that inflammation down. So as I'm implementing some of these other things, um, you know, you see acne go away. That was my case. Mm, that is massive. So just to expand on what you said there, this is tinctures and oils. This is not smoking, um, smoking yeah. CBD. So yeah, just to make that clear for the viewers. But yeah, that is good, man. And um, super important. Like you said, you know, the modern world is just so full of stresses everywhere. Everyone's running around like manic and, you know, we're just surrounded by like all these, you know, environmental factors like blue light and noise pollution and, you know, just so much stressors everywhere um so mm -hmm. it's important to you know have something to like help you ground you know get into that parasympathetic state because when you're in that fight or flight mode you realistically can't use your brain to its full capacity you know because mm -hmm. it's just thinking i need to get out of danger you know you're not going to be able to you know think as clear or you know be as creative because you know there's something there in the back of the mind that's like you know oh danger danger i need to go danger danger so that's good, yeah, man. Yeah, that's good. So, so I guess the the go going back to your question to kind of bring it into the 2020 is like 2020. You know, we saw lockdowns, we saw all that happen, and I think it gave everyone a time to take a step back and be like, okay, what are we doing here? So that's really when I had my first extra time away from the last three years of the startup project that I was in to start diving back into the research and really dialing in what I already knew and adding to it. So that's uh, when I first went Jack Cruz. So that's when I got into circadian health for the first time, mm. you know, really appreciating what light does and how that regulates our metabolism. Uh, went super high seafood, um, you know, and then that kind of progressed for about a year, year and a half, two years um, and then I went more primal. So I was doing like Jack Cruz circadian fundamentals with a lot of Ajonis mixed in um, mm. and obviously hopped on the liver train. So doing a lot of raw liver, raw tuna, a lot of like tons of raw fish um, and and did that up until this past fall. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's been interesting into each one of these gurus and their research and kind of their protocols and taking you know the valuable parts that they have and piecing it together with the others because i think it really necessitates uh kind of uh, picking and choosing a little bit from everyone to synthesize what is the truth and i think mm. we're, at least i feel like i'm closer to it than i was certainly mm. and i like i saw that complete transition there because i followed your account for no idea how long, but enough to know that you were very deep in yeah. that raw liver train and all that, you know, primal space mm -hmm. to now, you know, you have very different viewpoints, it seems. So if you could just expand a little on that, you were eating a bunch of raw liver, you were, you know, primal. What happened? How did you, you know, like come to the conclusions that, you know, you're, you're putting out there now? Yeah. Well, I guess as an asterisk, I was vegan before that. 
So in that oh. startup pit. Yep. So I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> and I, I did it, you know, I did it somewhat from a spiritual perspective because I was like, hey, you know, the ascetic life, if I'm kind of like in grind priest mode right now, mm. might as well go vegan too. If it doesn't work out, then at least I can say I did it for a year so I can shit on it afterwards. So I, I was vegan for a year. This was 2019. I forgot to mention that, you know, finally. Uh, mm. And then transitioned into the Jack Cruz stuff. So, you know, I, I ran blood panels uh, about six months into Jack Cruz just to figure out where my baseline was. And that's the first time I've really ever run blood panels. You know, I never went to the doctor, was not about any of that, but was like, hey, I need to figure out what my body is doing so I can track, you know, progress. Mm. Uh, so ran blood panels about six months into Jack Cruz and then, you know, did that for about a year and then ran a blood heavy metals test and my heavy metals were sky high. This was almost a year ago to the date. So, you know, I get the, I get the report back and my mercury is at like 86 percentile, like seven something milligrams per deciliter. Oh, and I'm wow. like, Oh my God. So, you know, in the background, of course, you've got the whole Ray Peak crowd that's like, you know, poofas are bad and the fish have too much mercury and you can't be eating that much fish or you're going to end up heavy metal toxic. And I'm like, uh oh, looks like there might be some truth to that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that that got me on this whole uh, mineral balancing rabbit hole, because from day one, I've been about trying to chelate heavy metals. That's like the main thing that disrupts methylation when you've got mercury in there. You're not going to be able to use zinc efficiently. Methylation starts to slow down. Like heavy metals are are a big problem for our metabolism. So to find out that I've been doing all this stuff and that my metal levels were still high, and this is after doing two years of Andy Cutler chelation using like DMSA and alpha lipoic acid cycles, um, I was shocked. So I I dove more into it and I was like, okay, what's the problem here? You know, and this is going through the summer where I'm still just pounding raw liver. I was on some of the Matt Blackburn train with the cod Ooh. liver oil. <laughs> yeah. Not good. We know that. Yeah. Now, not good. And I, I, I feel like I, I wasn't feeling better and it's not like I was like sick or anything, but I was like, I'm not lifting as much. I'm feeling a little bit like, you know, sore when I'm working out, like I have to warm up longer mentally i feel like i'm kind of lagging a little bit you know word mm. recall is starting to go and i'm like all right there's there's got to be something more to this well during this whole process my cat rue is also eating exactly what i'm eating so when i was jack cruz she's on pure salmon when i start to go primal she's on liver and kidney and all this stuff mm. and she started to lose hair on her belly and i'm mm. like what's going on with this? This is alopecia, essentially, you know, what's going on with her and people are coming to me, you know, guys I'm connected with on Instagram on similar diets who are running blood work, who are telling me some of the same things. Hey man, I'm starting to lose hair. Hey man, my, my testosterone's at 250, 300 Ooh. and, you know, big accounts too, where you're like, dude, we've all been doing what we thought was the healthiest thing for the last year, two years, three years or whatever. Why are T levels so low? Why are people losing hair? It seems like, you know, we've got some hypothyroid stuff that's mm -hmm. starting to happen. So ran, ran blood again. Uh, this was this past fall and noticed some things that were off, you know, homocysteine was super high, which is an inflammatory marker. Uh, saw that my TSH was a little bit high. So that's your thyroid stimulating hormone. You don't want that high because that's indicating that your body is essentially not receiving that message to create hor uh, thyroid hormone. Uh, you know, testosterone, it was, it was fine, but it wasn't great. It was like six, six something. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I would have expected eight to nine. Um, and then, you know, vitamin A was really high and I started to put all these things together and I'm like, well, wait a second. If Rue is lo losing hair and she's on this high vitamin A diet and 
me and a few of the other guys I'm talking to are starting to kind of develop similar hypothyroid tendencies. What's going on with vitamin A? What's going on with liver? And the entire time I'd been in the back of my mind, a little bit skeptical of the whole raw primal train because, you know, these guys in the, in the functional medicine space, functional health space, we're all here because we hate we didn't want to go get the vax we weren't Mm -hmm. wanting to go to the doctor during this last three years of this bullshit and i'm like well why are they giving these massive platforms to people who are giving us the right answers to combat the health situation that we're that we're in you would think that if everything's stacked against us they're also feeding us disinformation so in the Mm -hmm. back of my mind like you know is is liver really the best thing or is it just another one of these psyops to hit our health in some way? Mm. So, you know, ran, ran the blood panels and I was, I was uh, at this point really into HTMA hair analysis because mm. I was like, okay, if, if I need to balance my minerals to ca- take care of this heavy metal problem, HTMA seems like a pretty reasonable way to do it. You know, so you're taking hair samples you're looking at the heavy metal levels in your, in the hair, as well as things like the sodium potassium ratio, all of that. So I, I really dove into that for a solid five months and ran numerous hair panels on myself and clients, um, talked with all the guys in the space, a lot of questions answered. And ultimately I was like, you know what, this all comes down to the liver. Like we're looking at, at, at uh, mineral levels in the hair as if they're uniformly distributed throughout the body. That's not the case. They're different in every tissue. Mm. And what are the tissues that are most important? Well, in my opinion, and I think this is the objective truth, mineral balance really only matters in your liver because that's what's regulating your mineral status in every other part of your body. Mm. So I'm like, unless you're doing like a tissue biopsy of your liver, you're not going to see what's going on. Um, so at that point I was like, well, how do you fix the liver? Cause the liver is where methylation is also happening. That's where these heavy metals are hitting. That's where all the action is. That's where like 90% of your, your metabolism is in your liver. I was like, okay, well, let's start looking at how to rehabilitate the liver. And then thereafter your mineral levels should balance themselves naturally. And and you won't have any problems thereafter. So I, you know, a few guys over the course of the last few months had sent me articles on Tudka, which, you know, really no one knows about outside of the bodybuilding space. Guys who mm. run gear are really all about maintaining liver health because they've got that much added stress. Um, and they're all on Tudka. Tudka is this bile acid uh, that basically just helps you cycle toxins out of your body bile is like the number one way you remove toxins from the body and if there's any sort of disruption within bile flow or production things start to slow down so i was like you know i'll I'll, i was on some milk thistle very very common one everyone knows about milk thistle i was like Mm -hmm. all right well you know see if this works but then i got tudka and as you know pop the tudka (laughs) and the next day totally blasted. And I'm like, yeah. okay, this is doing something. And then took some more next day, same thing. And by the third day, I felt 100% different. I'm like, I feel like I'm 19 again, mm. that whole kind of brain fog and everything that I had kind of come into this fall during arguably the peak of vitamin A toxicity or subclinical toxicity dissipated instantly. And I was like, okay, there's something going on here. So all those pieces kind of fit together in this puzzle that Tudka solved. And then I jumped into how does Tudka work? Oh, well, it increases bile flow. What happens when, when bile flow is dysregulated, you've got all this bile that's building up in your, in your liver that can't get out through your gallbladder ducts that eventually starts to get back into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And then that's what causes every other disease. So you know, if, if you've got every toxin in your body that you're trying to get rid of going back into your bloodstream, you're just perpetually, you know, re-poisoning yourself. So mm. full circle, the skin issues that I had experienced during what I now know was 
liver dysfunction was bile trying to come out through the skin. Oh, so wow. like all, all skin issues are your body attempting to detoxify something that it can't because your bile flow is impaired and it's called subclinical or clinical cholestasis. Wow. So yeah, I, I jumped into that, figured out that um, you need to upregulate bile flow. You need to make sure that bile can move. And then you have to kind of assist the metal binding proteins in your liver that are going to be helping to grab onto things like uh, mercury and cadmium and lead. So zinc is super important for that. And then you have to have like molybdenum um, and selenium in order for zinc to work. So you upregulate zinc and then that works with the bile to essentially start moving shit out of your body literally mm. and then the body is able to repair thereafter mm. Mm -mm -mm. um give me what sorry i'm pausing this hold your thoughts i need to turn on a light because it's getting dark and okay. I, I need to fix it so just give me okay. one second no. right i don't know if that's gonna do much um oh yeah i feel like that's a that bit better good. right that dude oh we're like going so deep i love this i love hearing about this um so i'm just and gonna pick me, up here me off whenever because i can rant like i can go on and rant. oh no 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 no, <laughs> dude this is gold like i i you know I've, I've read about a lot of this on your page but like actually hearing how it works is gold so right are you ready to roll again sorry about that yeah, yeah. okay so what you're saying is that these diets, just to sum it up for the listeners, these diets that the likes of Liver King and Carnivore Aurelius, Paul Saladino, the diets that they're promoting really high in liver, you know, really high in organs to the point of excess. You're saying that that's actually doing us more harm than good, which is just completely going against, you know, the whole alternative health narrative. So that mm -hmm. is massive. So do you still eat liver? currently well well here's the thing so you know i think a lot of people who are implementing those diets see initial improvement because they are nutrient diets you know for the mm. first time someone's not eating garbage they've cut seed oils out they're, they're maybe lowering their carbohydrate intake and for the first time they're getting minerals that they wouldn't have otherwise had because liver does have a ton of minerals mm. uh the problem is is that when, if, if you're already in an impaired state of liver function, which the majority of people are with fatty liver, like basically the standard American diet and lifestyle, modern lifestyle everywhere induces subclinical fatty liver. Mm. If your liver is impaired, it has less of an affinity to be able to store vitamin A. So then that vitamin A goes directly into circulation. Mm. Um, and to give listeners kind of like a, a point of reference, like if you're familiar with skincare products, like a retinol, mm. topical retinol, which you use for blemishes or getting rid of zits or whatever, is vitamin A. And what does it do? It dissolves cells. You know, overnight, a zit's gone. It just got eaten up. Well, that's the same thing that's happening as vitamin A is in circulation because it, ha it, it doesn't have the ability to be properly stored in fat in your liver. Mm. So at the, at the same time that a intake is too high in a dose of liver, your copper and iron are also too high because in that state of liver dysfunction, you've got unbound copper and unbound iron in your liver. And, and the goal is like, obviously you need both of those, but you need them to be bound so that they're working and they're doing the job. The second they're unbound, they become reactive with oxygen which leads to oxidative stress, which leads, leads to liver scarring, which leads to less of an ability to store vitamin A. And it's just this kind of positive feedback cycle. Mm. Part, of the, part of the problem there, okay, you've got unbound copper, you've got unbound iron, you've got all this excess circulating A. Obviously, there's an oxidative stress problem, but what's happening in those conditions? Estrogen is skyrocketing. So that's the, that's the main piece that I noticed with a lot of these younger clients that I have being like, dude, I'm doing everything right. But my T is at 250. My T is at 350. And you, you look at these guys and you're like, what? This, this makes no sense. This makes no mm. sense at all. Well, in reality, like the harder you try to be healthy, the more primal you are, the more liver you eat, which is what we're all about. Like 
you know, we're like, we want to be the healthiest. I'm going to eat the most liver. <laughs> You're yeah. actually doing the most amount of damage. So mm. going back to your question, do I still eat liver? I'm not eating liver now. I've cut it out until I'm at a baseline. So mm. I'm running regular blood tests and everything. And I want to get back to true homeostasis before I start taking something like that back in. But I think you have to look at uh, how often would we be getting vitamin A in a natural environment? Mm, Obviously, exactly. you know, if you're getting a kill, you're going to have a liver or part of a liver, you know, you're mm. probably sharing it with others. Um, another piece that is in a natural environment, you're a hundred percent circadian. So you're, you're living outside, you're getting sunlight, which helps metabolize a and breaks down a that's in circulation uh and you're you're just 100 percent. it's way easier to metabolize all of that when you're outside and moving in in the sun mm. so it's like okay we'd be realistically looking at maybe a weekly intake of a few ounces you mm. know and i think a lot of us were doing a few ounces per meal several mm. times a week and i think that's where the problem came in so i think you know i'll incorporate it in at some point, but not right now. Definitely. Mm, 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 mm. I'm happy to say that from the start of my liver eating days, I was always conscious of the fact that, you know, when you have, let's say, for example, a cow, I believe the ratio of muscle meat to organ meat is 30 to one. So for every 30 pounds of muscle meat, you have one pound of organs. So that's kind of how I base my organ consumption as well. It was, it's just what seemed right to me. And so mm -hmm. I guess just to back your point, you know, from the start of this like liver train, um, kind of always knew that, you know, like, for example, in nature, you're getting one liver shared between 30 people once a week. So you're getting, you know, just a little tiny bit. It's like a, a supplement not to be eaten as like the main meal. So that's uh, it's good to know that there's some real science behind it as well. Yeah. Right from, you know, obviously. Yeah. And you I, look I at like they... Liver King and the content he's putting out and he's got livers that are like massive and he's just like mm. taking the whole thing down and it's like, okay, well, we've all known he's been on steroids the entire time, yeah. right? And, and now here he is taking down like a pound, two pounds, three pounds of liver at a time. Like this guy is just a marketing cartoon. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sure enough, it comes out, he is. So it's mm. like, okay, well if he's a marketing cartoon is everyone else. And you know, I think we're all aware that him and Paul, C Paul, Paul Saladino are both those companies are owned by the same parent company. Mm. So you're like, okay, they've got two different brands, both in the organ space, pushing organs with these kind of cartoon like characters, you know, Brian took the fall admitting he's on steroids and Paul hasn't yet, but, Dude, he went over his December blood work publicly and he's got massive iron overload. So you look at his ferritin levels and they were like 315 and he was happy they dropped to 250. Uh, you look at like Morley Robbins work and he's like, ideal ferritin is like 20. Oh, wow. Like everyone should be under 100. Mm. And, you know, you're looking at Paul Saladino's blood sitting at 250 his, you know, his T3 is at like 2.7, his sex hormone binding globulin, which is what uh, is, is binding to testosterone is like 97 or something. Mm. And like in normal range is less than 50. Mm. So you're looking at this guy and you're like, okay, your T3 is super low, your iron's super high and your SHBG is sky high. How do you have 900 tests? And I showed this to one of my buddies who's a clinician and he's like, no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. He's on exogenous. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I mean, look at, look at how he has changed just aesthetically in the last three years, you know? So I love Saladino. I think he's a good guy, but like he doesn't look the same way he did two, three years ago. And his mm. testosterone doesn't reflect the rest of his blood panel. So I'm yeah. like, Dude, is this guy even legit? I respect the fact that he's publicly going over his blood work. But if you know how to read blood, you're like, dude, you've got iron toxicity. Mm, so dude. it's, and that's why, that's why he had to start implementing the fruit. That's why these carnivore guys started 
they hit this wall and then they went fruit. They're like, oh, well, fruit's ancestral too. We need carbs. Well, it's because when you're in an impaired state of liver function, when you can't process A, you basically have to run off of sugar. And if you're not running off of sugar, you're toast because your, your liver's lost the ability for gluconeogenesis. So just anecdotally, like, you know, it was the steroids for liver King and with Saladino, I guess he's treading water with fruit, maybe on some exogenous tea. That's my personal opinion. Wow. Dude, that is huge because it's like calling out the good guys, you know, thinking that they're controlled opposition, but what, you know, what you're saying here is real science and it's making a lot of sense. So, you know, that is something to, something to think about here. I like how you started all of this by, you know, saying you know that preface that you said about you know the media being against us for the most part and them you know perhaps not wanting us healthy so how are these guys you know getting this huge mm -hmm. push and you know their their videos are everywhere their faces are everywhere you know the algorithm loves them but then there's you know people like yourself for example you know preaching alternative health as well but a different angle and you know that reach isn't really there you know the the algorithm doesn't really work in our favor except for i saw that you posted before about seed oils and seed oil is bad and that like went super viral oh right? my god so it's yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just to just to <laughs> preface this before you you start um for this, seed oils are bad but how you're going to explain now i don't think it's like the main thing that people should focus on and it's like the main thing that's you know viral now like it used to be you know gluten-free or whatever Mm -hmm. And now it's seed oil is bad. Seed oil is bad. And they are, but as you'll explain now, um, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's not it's, the main focus. It's much, more new, it's much more nuanced, but they, what I'd like to call controlled opposition, give us these kind of like carrots at the end of the stick, the new shiny mm. object of something that's okay to vilify. Mm. That's within this kind of safe space where it's like, okay, you can be against this, but you're not really you know, bringing any sort of radical information to light. So I think that's what's going on with seed oils, where it's like, you know, seed oils and cereals and these things that a lot of these guys talk about. Yeah, they're bad. We all know that they're bad, but they're not the root problem. They're not, you know, if you eliminate seed oils, yeah, you're going to see some improvements if you are, you know, on a high seed oil diet, but you're not going to be able to solve your health issues. Mm. And yeah, going back to that post that you mentioned, I was like, what are the odds I make a meme and have it kind of revolving around seed oils so that that verbiage is in the post that the algos will pick it up. And like, dude, I, I think it reached like 30,000 accounts where <laughs> a normal post of mine, yeah, it'll reach my followers. It'll reach like 2000 followers, but you look at the non-follower reach and it's like 50 people. Yeah. You're like this isn't even possible. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy, dude. So you've presented a lot of good information here, a lot of science. So I'm sure that all the listeners are by now wondering, what do we eat? Like, you know, if 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 seed oils are bad and now liver is bad, <clears throat> let's say, so what what do we eat? What are some clearly nutrition tips? So I think first and foremost, you have to make sure the liver is running at 100. percent So this is the protocol I put together about two months ago now. Um, that involves Tudka, zinc, selenium. Um, I've got a formulation coming out in about two weeks that'll have mm. all this in there. But right now it's on the page posted for free. So you can check that out. But you you need to detox the liver and that involves getting bile moving. Mm. So I think most people that are healthy have some bile issue to begin with. People who are unhealthy also have a colon issue. So if you're coming into this, like my health is messed up, I don't know where to start. You need to do a colon cleanse because if you're detoxing the liver, it's going to be going into the colon. And if the colon is messed up, then it's, you're going to have that same kind of uh, toxins getting back into the blood, into the bloodstream. Cause when your colon's messed up, you've got leaky gut, all that mm -hmm. stuff is reabsorbed. So I think it, it starts with the colon cleanse. Um, I use Senna, which is a, a natural diuretic. You pop that at night. And then the next day, fast on like a citrus water uh, with salt, um, apple cider vinegar, tamarind paste is another good thing just to get that flow going. You basically want to shit as much as possible for like one to two days. That sounds nasty, but it's mm -hmm. like 
I, I read something during this research that like the average American has like 20 pounds of fecal matter in their intestinal tract. Oh, wow. And you're like, why is everyone sick and unhappy? Because they're full of shit, literally. So <laughs> you got to flush all of that out. And then you can start taking the tudka, the zinc, the selenium, and upregulating liver function so that you're getting bioflow moving. And this stuff happens quickly where you'll notice a change in whatever issues you have, as well as a change in headspace within like a few days. Mm. And then, you know, you're starting to ramp things back up. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people ask like, what do I need to test? What sort of blood test do I need to do? Honestly, don't worry about it. Like, I'm not very dogmatic. Like, I think it's pretty fair to say that 80, 90% of us are in this state to some degree. So it's like, just start implementing these things. You'll start to feel better. And then after maybe a month or two, run your bloods, see where you're at. Mm. So to, to, to get that sense of how is my liver doing, I've found that the best thing to look at is T3. Mm. So T3 is your active thyroid hormone. A lot of doctors, if you go in for a normal blood test, will look at TSH and T4. Yeah. TSH is, you know, your, your thyroid stimulating hormone that's going to be producing T4. And they'll look at those two numbers and be like, maybe you have a thyroid problem. Maybe you don't, you know, every time you have a thyroid problem, oh, it's an autoimmune disease. Like they have no idea. <laughs> mm. Well, in reality, that T4 that's being produced by your thyroid, 80% of it is converting to the active form T3 in your liver. So when you run blood tests and you look at your T3, if it's in that, you know, mid threes to mid two or lower range, you know that you've got liver dysfunction. So that's like, that's the cheapest, easiest way to look at it is T3. You can look at, uh, you know, you can look at your serum vitamin A, you can look at your liver enzymes, GGT and ALP. Um, but those won't necessarily give you a real, a real time snapshot because liver enzymes lag about, you know, months behind the actual damage occurring. So by the time your GGT or ALP is up, 80% of the damage is done. So a lot wow. of people are going for bloods, looking at their liver, be like, oh, I'm fine. When in reality, those enzymes just haven't caught, caught up to where it's the function is actually at. So GGT, ALP serum vitamin A, but T3, I think is the most important one. Mm. So going to your question, what sort of nutritional things should you implement? Well, once T3 is good, and I think we're all capable of T3 over four, you know, mm. the, the best blood work I'm getting in from clients, you know, I got a 4.8 this week. That's the best I've seen. I think anything over four, if you're five, you're like immaculate. Mm. Once you're in that state, I think a seasonal, I think seasonal eating is the most important. So in the circadian space, everyone's talking about seasonal eating. I don't think you can seasonally eat healthily unless your liver works, because mm. there's going to be people with thyroid and liver issues that are trying to go keto during the winter. And it just exacerbates the problem. So if you're not truly healthy and you're trying to go keto, you're going to end up with hypothyroid every single time. Um, and that's where you're seeing people talk about, oh, fasting is dangerous. You know, you need carbohydrates, blah, blah, blah. That's all true if you're hypothyroid, if you've got liver dysfunction because they're one and the same. So yeah, once your T3 is good, go into seasonal eating, which means when it's sun, carbs. So eat what, what would be available. You know, in mm. the spring and summer, we're more active. That's where we're going to be getting fruit. That's where we're going to be getting root vegetables and grains and nuts and all the things that nature provides with the intent of putting on some weight into that later summer and fall, especially as all of the uh, fruiting bodies come to come to uh, fruition and harvest, you know, you're going to be loading mm -hmm. up on apples and root vegetables and all that stuff with the intent of putting on some fat to take into the winter months. And then I think as you transition into the winter months with less sun, naturally your thyroid activity is going to slow down a little bit. And then you'll be able to run at a slower metabolic pace uh, efficiently on a more keto based diet. So I think it's this delicate balance of pro metabolic and keto, but mm -hmm. during the respective seasons.
Mm, that is massive, yeah, and that is exactly how I how I eat basically. So that is good to know. That is good to know. Um, right. So we are coming up on just about an hour here. So I know that you run clearly.com where you offer a pretty good range of supplements. So I just want you to dive into that. Now, I know you offer one that I'm very passionate about myself, and that is Shilajit. So can we get a rundown on Shilajit? Yeah, yeah, Shilajit. It's, I mean, that was one of the first supplements I got turned on to in like 2017 and didn't come full circle with it again until what, two years ago now. I was like, oh my God, like I took that three years ago how have i not mm. been taking this entire time uh so i figured out uh, how to get my hands on that i've been importing it from the altai range in russia which is like one of the best deposits but it's basically a, a mineral resin that exudes from mountain ranges across the world so you've got all this detritus and earth-like material that is in the earth's crust that is then brought up in mountain ranges and you know it's it's in rocks that are then crushed and then refined and you get this this really dark mineral resin so it's got 85 trace minerals all those important ones i was telling you about mm. zinc molybdenum selenium kind of those micronutrients that we don't have in our modern soil because it's been stripped using agricultural practices that aren't sustainable mm. so you're getting you know a full profile of those as well as fulvic and humic acids which help chelate and bind to some of these heavy metals that we're trying to get rid of. At the same time, those help break down things like glyphosate, which is a huge problem. Uh, that's, I mean, that's another whole conversation, but yeah. glyphosate essentially mimics glycine and glycine is incorporated in like the majority of protein folding. So instead of glycine being taken up, you've got glyphosate and then it like nothing works, nothing works with it. So that's a good, it's a good way to detoxify things. Um, and then it's got C60, which is a type of carbon, uh, dodecahedral 3D carbon molecule that's super electron dense. So it's able to assist in mitochondrial performance. It's an electron donor similar to something like methylene blue. So it's mm -hmm. like a natural methylene blue. You've got your chelators in there and then you've got a mineral boost too. And because the fulvic and humic acids are in there, uh, it helps shuttle minerals into the cell more efficiently. So you're actually able to uh, utilize them better. So I think all around, it's something good to incorporate. Um, I'll, I'll take a heavy dose before I hit the sauna, because when you sauna, that's when you're bringing all of these metals out of storage into circulation so that you can grab them with the folic and humic acids. So Shilajit is, is something that I offer. Um, but I'm most excited about this liver detox line. Um, mm. you know, I've got the, the protocol up right now and it's got like, I don't know, five or six, seven different supplements where I'm like, oh, take this, this, this. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't have this listed. Take phosphatidylcholine too, because that's super important. It's just been kind of this shotgun approach because I'm like, people need to know this right now. Uh, but I've got everything condensed down into two different supplements. So there'll be a liver detox that has... Uh, the Tudka, zinc, selenium, molybdenum, and phosphatidylcholine. Mm. Uh, that's basically going to hit the liver with everything it needs. It's the most comprehensive liver detox supplement on the market. And then I'm doing uh, an NAC and taurine combo. So that's a, a redox boost, I'm calling it. Uh, so both of those are kind of helping turn on those detoxification, anti-inflammatory pathways while you're upregulating the liver. Um, and it's just two pills. So I'm planning on going to my supplement cabinet and literally swiping everything into the trash and replacing it with two bottles. Wow. Yeah. Dude, because I think, we're, you know, there's, there's so much going around with different pages of like the top 10 supplements to do this and five more supplements to do this. And people are just in this like frenzy of like, what do I need? Do I need, does tongue cattle lead work? Does this work? Does this work? And it's like, well, dude, it all works if the liver works. So let's just get that working. And then you don't need to take this mess of other things that we've been sold. Wow. Yeah, dude, that is, that is great. That is such a good idea as well. Like, you know, and the signs and, you know, the, the anecdotal stories that you provided in all of this as well, you know, is, is so solid that that's definitely what I'm looking out for the liver detox and the redox. Sounds good. Sounds yeah, good. I'm, I'm keeping it simple. It's formula one and formula two. 
<laughs> mm, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And on top of that, as we've discussed previously, you offer CBD as well on your website. Is that correct? Yep, yep. Got to got to stay true to the roots. So mm. I've got full spectrum CBD and then a full spectrum CBD that's THC free. For anyone that has to drug test, it's still got all the other cannabinoids in it, just no THC. And then CBG, which is another cannabinoid, uh, a newer one. Hmm. And is that one you make yourself then? Are you still involved in the the hemp industry or? Yeah, I'm still involved in the wholesale markets. So I'm still Hmm. moving uh, isolate and distillate and crude oil and that kind of stuff. So uh, I've got quite a network from that. So it's pretty easy to see what the best material is and pull that and use it for formulation and get it to you guys for a a affordable price. Cause like Mm. you look at some of these other brands, I know the ins and outs of their supply chain. I supply half of them and it's like, you know, they don't use the best product and they charge 150 bucks for a bottle. And people are like, Oh, CBD doesn't work. And you're like, yeah, like 95% of it doesn't because people are cutting corners at every possible turn. Wow. (laughs) So you just called out, everything and everyone it's been <laughs> such, such a fantastic podcast I've got, that, you he, know. here's one more call out i wanted to save this for for your uh podcast because i just found this out like three days ago Let's and it. it's it's insane dude so there's been all of this hubbub about who is carnivore aurelius is he a woman oh. you, know, who, you know is he <laughs> is he this llc in wyoming that's you know laid on back taxes blah 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 I had come across some posts a couple of years ago that he was tagged in and it was like this five foot seven dwarvish looking guy with a beard. I don't know if that was him or not, but here <laughs> once and for all, Carnivore Aurelius is a copyright firm. Oh, wow. Uh, Nick Verge is the copywriter for Carnivore Aurelius and he copyrights also for the likes of Alex Jones and a few other big names. So this is a little bit further down the rabbit hole for these platforms being controlled ops is potentially the same copyright groups are putting out all their content. Wow. So I'm digging more into that. If anyone else wants to do some more research, uh, Nick Verge, I haven't dug into it yet, but I I just got that straight from the source like, yeah, a couple of days ago. Wow. <laughs> that is that is insane. You're so invested in the scene, but I love it. It's for the greater good. You yeah, know? exactly, man. Clearly. It's uh, entertaining like, too. It's entertaining. Mm. It's like, you know, with, with what's happened to uh, the social environment the last three years, I think it's been good for a lot of us to connect on these platforms because, you know, regardless of there being distance, there's still huge amounts of uh, intellectual engagement. And, you know, I've been able to meet some pretty cool people. And I think we've all learned a ton um, from being able to interact the way that we do. Mm-hmm. Dude, that is that is massive on that last point as well. That's going <laughs> to ruffle a few feathers for sure. And you best believe as soon as I'm off this, I'm going to do some digging as well. But Zeb, clearly uh, we're coming up to the end of this podcast now. This has been fantastic. It's very clear that you're a man for the people, you know, just trying to get yourself and as many other people as healthy as possible like the correct way rather than falling into Mm -hmm. these like you know very very niche markets or whatever and just doing one thing in excess and to like extreme levels so that is good man so just to wrap this off where can people reach you i'm at uh clearly c-l-r-l-y-y on instagram uh, it's my backup. The CLRLY is not launched yet. I'm just waiting for my account to get deleted before I hop on that one. Um, or clearly.com. So CLRLY.com. Sweet. And I will say that I'm a member of your Telegram channel as well. So Oh, I yeah. Telegram. Advise, hop on the chat. Absolutely. I would advise every every single listener to hop on that because there's some gold in there. So, yeah. Cool, man. Zeb. Well. Thank you. Bart, I appreciate you having me on, man. It's been a good conversation. Of course, man. I, I've truly learned a lot. And I do believe there is enough in that beautiful brain of yours to have another one on top of this some point down the line. Um, so you best believe that's going to happen. So yeah, yeah I'm up Zeb. for that. And uh, keep doing what you do, man. I, I respect your work. I think you're getting a really good message out to a lot of those younger guys out there. Um, and at your age, yeah, you're killing it, man. Appreciate it, man. Clearly, thank you so much for your time today. And to all the listeners, this has been Fundamental Wisdom, Episode 5 with Clearly.
Coach Bart K signing off now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. <laughs>